yeah, thank you so much, Megan. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I'm Patrick. I live on the Sunshine Coast. I'm really excited to um, yeah, run a ping pong session with you guys. Um, with me is Trevor. Like Megan said, Trevor is just preparing for the Olympic, uh, the Paralympic Games in Japan. And so today, I guess we want to give you guys an introduction uh, to table tennis and just show you guys why table tennis is the best sport in the world. Table tennis can be played from anywhere and everywhere. And I just have um, a couple of um, tools with me. So you guys probably know the bat and the ball that you can use and you can have play at home on the dining table or somewhere in the local community, whether it's in a park or so. Um, however, we also today in particular, since we didn't know really what kind of equipment you have, you can consider to have a spatula, or you can decide to play with a book and just hold that one. Um, I even have a frying pan here and might use it a bit later. And of course, most importantly, a balloon. So I have Bobby here with me today who um, will help me to guide you guys through the exercises. Like um, every good um, session and every good physical activity that you guys will do in the future and are doing, we start with the warm up and um, I guess I'll just show you guys a couple of activities that we're going to do and then Trevor will help me to um, find some adaptations that might work for everyone uh, when we do those warm-up activities. Keep in mind, um, you will need a ball or a balloon or something like that. So I hope you guys have something that is semi-round around you that we can use. Um, so to start this off, um, our first activity is that I will call out a number, which is one, two, or three. And depending on which number that is, we will do for, let's say, 10, 15 seconds, a certain activity. So if I say one, it is a star jump, okay? All of you guys probably know a star jump. If I say two, we will do a shoulder arm rotation. And if I say three, we will grab the balloon Hello, fence. And, it, and do a 360 degree and turn around. Um, Trevor, do you have any ideas of how we can uh, change those exercises for some participants? Um, maybe if you don't have uh, room to like turn around, maybe you can throw throw and catch the ball or um, something like that. Yeah. Throw and catch it, throw and, throw and catch, catch, throw yeah. catch it. Perfect. We can also use a different ball, of course, just throwing and catching. Perfect. Um, do you have any idea for the star jumps of what we could do? Um, star jumps can be maybe clap above your head just with that hands or clap high or clap low um, or both perfect yeah and some of you might even decide to clap their hand and jump at the same time okay um so all of the eyes are going to trevor now so i hope that you guys um can see trevor and i'm going to call out the numbers and then we just try to um depending on which number i say we try to do the exercise if it's a one it's a star jump Perfect, Trevor. If it's a two, we do the shoulder arm rotation. Try to get a bit more flexibility in our shoulder joints. And if it's a three, we grab a ball or whatever we have and we turn around, try to throw it and catch it and turn around 360 degree. So that looks excellent. I hope everyone is ready. Have your warm up. Make sure you have some space. We don't want anyone to fall over. So we start with a one. One is the star jumps. Very good. Very good. Just a couple more seconds. We go over to two. We change and we do the shoulder arm rotation. Very good. Two is shoulder arm rotation. And we go over to three where we grab the ball, we grab the balloon, and we slowly turn 360 degree. Oh. Don't go too fast. We don't want anyone to go over to. We turn around, go the other direction, and we change again to two. Shoulder arm rotation. Two, 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 shoulder arm rotation. Very good. Three, we grab the balloon again and turn 360 degree. I like your effort there, Chris. Keep it, yeah, very good. And we do one, we do the star jumps. I like it a lot, very good there. Judith, here we go. Very nice. Very good, keep it going. We go to three again, we grab the balloon, catch the ball, 
throw and catch the balloon, throw and catch the balloon. Very good, a few more rounds. Awesome, I like it. You can put the ball aside, you can relax your shoulders a little bit. I feel like we are all warmed up and ready to go. Um, just quickly checking here if we should go into breakout rooms or not. Um, just checking with the team from Casey here. What are your thoughts, Megan? At the moment, we're, we're doing okay. Is everyone, everyone following okay? Just a big shout out there to big, Chris. Just give us some thumbs up on your screen. Yep, just a couple of thumbs up. Yep, I reckon we keep going as we are. Okay. Love it, love the commitment. Very good. Um, a shout out there for me. Um, uh, most valuable player in this warm up round was definitely Chris there with the big round with the shoulder rotation. So, very good. Um, next thing we're going to speak about is just we're going to talk about some of the main skills and um, techniques that we need when we play table tennis. So some of you guys may have seen the table tennis class before. Usually one side's black, one side is red. Doesn't really matter. Like I said before, we can really play with anything and everything. And the first um, skill that, that we will do now is we'll just learn a bit more of how to hold the bat. And then we will try to practice to get a bit more feeling for the bat and the ball. So if you have a table tennis bat, they usually only cost a couple of dollars. You can find them almost at every sports shop. Um, what we do is we try to hold the handle right at the top here. We go with the hand around the grip with the bottom three fingers. The index finger stays at the bottom. And when we go to the other side, we can see that the thumb is um, just at the bottom below the rubber. Okay? And the bat is sitting nicely in between your thumb and your index finger. This is excellent, Toby. I like it. You can bring the finger even a bit further down. So some of you can see have the bat up here. We can bring this all the way down here. Okay. However, for today, like I said before, you can really use anything you want. So I'm going to use my beautiful spatula, but I'm also going to try to hold um, the bat or the spatula the way it is meant to be held with the index finger down and the thumb down. <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do just to get used to um, the grip and the feeling for the ball and in this case the spatula is we are um, going to play a game in which we try to bounce the ball on the bat. Okay so what we do is we just grab the balloon and we try to bounce the ball on the bat. If this is a little bit too challenging or it doesn't really work with your ball, you can do what Trevor is just showing you now. You can try to balance the ball on the um, bat. So that's working um, well, very good. Once we are able to do this, we can start to walk around a little bit. So we'd like you guys to walk backwards, go forward a little bit, maybe try again the 360 turnaround and just see um, how you feel holding the bat, balancing it. That's all way too easy for Trevor. So if you're ready, we can try to go one level up. I'd like you guys to start now to bounce the ball. Let me do the same. And that's very good, Trevor, even with the tennis ball. This guy's a legend. So we bounce the ball. We slowly go back a little bit. We go forward a little bit. And we can try to count how often we can hold it. Don't worry if... Um, don't worry if a ball goes off on the ground or so, just pick it up and we try it again. So we balance the ball, we go backwards and forwards. I can see that most of you guys, and Trevor is just doing the same, he's bouncing the ball with the side where the thumb is looking up to the ceiling. And so what that means, it's the forehand side that he's bouncing the ball with. The other side, when the index finger looks to the ceiling, is called the backhand side. So what we're doing now is we're going to change it and we just try to balance the ball on the backhand side. Okay, I can see that Trevor lost the ball. Oh, no. We have the index finger looking to the ceiling and we're just going to um, try to balance the ball on the backhand side. If that is working, we start then to balance the ball on our backhand side. If you don't have a spatula or pen or anything that you can use, just whatever ball you have, just place that ball on the back of your hand and try to balance the ball on the back of your hand. 
I like it a lot, Irenia. This is a um, decent sized table tennis ball that you got there. And if you feel like you're able to, then try to balance the ball with the backhand side. <clears throat> it's not easy with the spatula. Luckily, uh, we got some big ones there. I can well prepare this very big spatula. Um, so we tried to balance. Now, this is way too easy as well. So we now make it. Um, one step more challenging. If you feel like, mm, I'm not sure, I think I want to stick with my backhand side, that's great as well. And you can just um, keep going with that skill that we just did. But otherwise, if you guys want to challenge yourself a little bit more. Oh, excuse me, sorry. We start to alternate. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, sorry, I just wanted to let you know, I don't have a ball here. That was at Eltham House. So I'm here at the flat. That's so okay. I have no ball. <laughs> this session. So then if you guys don't have a ball now, you can just um, go through that session maybe later. Or you guys contact us and we make sure that we find you guys a lot. Oh, yes. So that's okay. I can so see you doing an imaginary bat there, Chris. That's looking pretty, pretty good. I, I'm doing a bit of that too. Of course, yeah. <laughs> the next exercise that we do is we're going to alternate forehand and backhand. So we're just going to go once with the forehand, once with the backhand, and we just bring the ball up and down. Now, again, to make it a little bit more challenging, we try to go backwards and forwards. We can try to do a 360. So we try to turn around and we always alternate. The absolute mega challenge that I like to do is when people grab the bat to the other hand. So whatever you feel like your level was, let's say it was forehand, you felt most comfortable with balancing the ball on the forehand, that, and you don't have a a spatula or pen or anything, just use your other hand and we try to do the same with the non dominant, with your less dominant hand and we try to balance the ball up like this. Just using your left hand or with your right handed player or the right hand if you're normally a left handed player. Okay, I think we can relax a little bit. That was pretty good. I don't know if you guys have some water around. But if you feel like getting some water, now is your chance. Very good, Chris. Chris, you came well prepared there with the bed, some water. I like it. Sports shirt on. That's a yes. sort of commitment we need here. Very good. <laughs> um, how is everyone doing? Did it, how many taps did everyone get then? Does anyone want to share? Maybe we just have a quick bit Grinley here. He gets that Grinley's not even stopping. It's just with the cricket bat, excellent. See, oh, Taylor, oh, so hard to. Irena, too, well done. <laughs> I love that. That's very good. Yep, and just trying to balance the ball those back and forth inside. Very good. Um, okay, the next exercise that we're going to do is we're going to um, speak about the ready position, okay? Now, the biggest um, thing that I find when I speak with people about ping pong is that they say that table tennis is not a sport. And so we always have to fight for um, getting recognition and that we are athletes as well, we're training hard. And there is a pathway that leads from community level all the way to Paralympic Games. And um, that's kind of an option for anyone who's joining the sport at any age. Um, and the next, so that's why we have, right, that's why it's important that we stay in a sporty position at the table so we can move well and so that we can, um, when people look, they can actually see, okay, this is a proper sport. So if we just um, look at um, Trevor now and just see his position, you can see that he's standing quite low. So that means that he bends his knees and he leans forward with his upper body and his bat is just in front of him. And all of a sudden that looks like, well, this guy is ready to run a marathon, and lift 500 kilo or play table tennis. And um, so Trevor really shows us here how we have to stand on the, on the uh, table. And he's just giving us a quick introduction on how we play forehand and backhand, okay? So we just have a quick look. Right now he's playing the forehand side, as I said before, Forehand is the side that the thumb is on, okay? So it's starting next to your body. You drop your bat back down and you go forward, up. Back down, forward, up. 
Very good. Judith, very good. I like it. Toby, show us one of your fancy forehands. Chris, excellent. The finishing position is towards your forehead. So you start back down and then you go all the way to your forehead. Okay, let's do a few of those. Okay, so we're going to play 10 of those forehands. We rotate our body back down, forward up towards your forehead. If you have a book, this is your chance to hold the book. Go towards your forehead, rotate your body. Seven, five, three, one. Okay, and stop, relax your shoulders, very good. Next challenge is to use our backhand side. Backhand side is the side where your index finger is on. And we use that um, backhand side when we play the balls that are in front of us or towards the left of us, okay, if I'm a right-handed player. So normally I try to move my legs so I can play backhand in front of my body or I play forehand next to my body. So let's play some backhands. We're just going to watch Trevor quickly before we get too excited. Um, the bat goes down towards the hip and then we go forward up with the bat facing the direction that we want to play the ball to. So back down, forward up. Excellent, Trevor. I like it a lot. Can we play 10 of those backhands? Come on, Julius, show us your awesome backhands. Very good. We always stay parallel to the table, so our shoulders face the direction that we want to play to. Unlike tennis, where I can play my awesome Roger Federer one-handed backhand from the side, in table tennis, I stay parallel to the net, parallel to the table. Okay? From back down, forward up. Trevor, give us six, seven more of those awesome Paralympian ready to go to Tokyo backhands. Yeah, yeah. Chris and Danny, you could try doing this with your hands if you wanted as well, if you wanted to have a go. <clears throat> Very good. What we add now is we're going to add some side to side movement, okay? So when we play table tennis, we have to do some side steps in which we shuffle our legs. I'm just going to bring the camera to my legs, in which we shuffle our legs from one side to the other, okay? So what we're going to play now is we're going to play one backhand, we shuffle to the side, we play one forehand. Shuffle to the side, one backhand. And I think you guys are starting to get a pretty good exercise. Um, here, starting from one side to the next. Anyway, I'm starting to get sweaty, but that might also be just because I'm on the Sunshine Coast where it's a bit hotter. I don't know if that's the So left to right, shuffle. We spoke about footwork. We spoke about um, forehand and backhand and how to hold um, the grip. What I'd like you guys to do now is we're going to combine that. And I'd like you guys to just grab the ball again. And we're going to start to balance the ball with the forehand side. And I'd like you guys to stand in your basic ready position to hold the bat um, with the right grip, hold the spatula as if you're holding a bat, and we start to balance the ball and do side steps to the side. Side steps to the side. Very good, Trevor. Now we turn around, we're gonna play some, we're gonna balance the ball on the backhand side. Step to the side, step to the side. Okay, just do it in your own time. Very good. The final exercise that we prepared for you guys is um, wall table tennis. So some of you guys might have watched the movie Forrest Gump, where uh, Forrest Gump plays against the table tennis table and he becomes like a professional table tennis player through this exercise. And um, that it's not quite that easy, but a definitely a good exercise to start off with. So what we're going to do is, Trevor, do you mind just sort of turning around there? I'm just going to keep explaining it. We're going to grab a ball and a bat, and we try to play the ball against the wall, and then try to start off with, we're going to can start to try to catch the ball. Okay? Hit it against the wall, and then catch it back. Use your nice backhand side to start off with. So hold the ball and hit the ball with the back of your hand, and you then try to hit the ball against the wall and catch it again. Hit the ball against the wall. Nice, Judith, I like it. Oh, almost. Very good. Against the wall and back. Very good. So we have now a couple of exercises that you guys can do at home, um, and you guys will certainly see some of those exercises 
if you were to go to a local club or um, a table tennis center or a table tennis program near you. How is everyone feeling? Is everyone okay? Relax your shoulders. Yeah. Anyone as sweaty as I am? Probably not. I feel like I <laughs> You guys seem to be much fitter than me. Lots of fun. Um, the, finally, it, it doesn't happen very often that we get to speak with someone who just qualified for the Paralympic Games, who's flying all the way to Japan uh, next year to um, represent Australia. And so I think this is a huge opportunity to just learn a little bit from Trevor. And I invite you guys to just think about one or two questions that you guys want to ask someone who is a Paralympian. But to start off with, maybe I just quickly invite Trevor to tell us a little bit about your story, how you started to play and what brought you to, what brought you to the level that you are at now to, to play on Paralympic level. Yeah, so I started playing. I had a table at home that my grandfather built um, when I was, you know, just a child, maybe seven or eight years old. Um, probably a little bit later on in my teenage years, I started to play at local clubs and at school. Uh, I represented my school team and that was really fun, playing good competition against um, players my age. I continued to play throughout my life and it wasn't until I was age 29 and uh, one of the local coaches approached me and said hey Trevor you, I can see you have a disability um, I was born with a neuromuscular disability so some of my muscles in my body don't work um, a little bit uh, worse on my right side than my left and uh, one leg is shorter than the other so I sort of move around like this the coach um, he asked me to to compete for the Australian team. Um, and I was really lucky enough to win uh, the Australian championship at my first attempt. Uh, yeah, the Australian coaches thought I was pretty good. So they asked me to join the Australian team and everything happened really quickly. I was all of a sudden playing my first international tournament uh, back in 2013 in Thailand, which was a really awesome experience. Um, yeah, and I've played quite a few tournaments, traveled overseas representing Australia. It's really something I'm proud of um, to wear the green and gold colors. And I have competed at world championships before, which is almost equal to the Paralympics. Um, but Tokyo, which is, is coming up next year, that will be my first Paralympic games. And well, I'm pretty, pretty excited to, um, to be there because it's going to be a huge exciting event with the best Paralympic sportsmen and women around the world. It's, it's going to be amazing. No doubt. I mean, you know, just being in that environment, um, I can imagine it will be a huge inspiration. Um, when you started off playing, could you imagine that you would travel the world and represent Australia, um, even when someone approached you at 29? Or um, what kind of, do you think that that's possible for anyone and everyone who's starting off? Or what are your yeah, thoughts? Well, initially my love for table tennis was just for the fun of it. It's such an easy game to have fun. Uh, a wide variety of people can play it, whether you're young or old. Um, you, can, you can do activities like we are today, just learning bouncing the ball against the wall so, or playing on the kitchen table. It's such an easy game to play. That's why I, I fell in love with it. And then, yeah, representing my country was all of a sudden it was a dream and then I had something to aim for. It really sort of um, changed my life in a positive way. I had um, you know, more purpose to represent my country in sport um, and it's really sort of driven me to start training hard and to um, yeah, work towards the Paralympics, which yeah, that's, that's the dream to get there, maybe try and win a medal, who knows? Totally. Um, are there any questions from, from you guys for Trevor? Maybe Chris or so, anyone who, who has a question? Well, it looks like Toby has a question. Toby, do you want to take yourself off mute and you can ask? Oh, yeah. Um, I like, I like this one. I like triple ball. That's the way to go. Awesome. 
That's how we all start. Nice, Toby. Oh, thank you. And does anyone um, else have a question? Trevor, for someone who's just starting off and who's sort of interested in the sport, what would you suggest for them? I guess what's sort of the next step for them if they sort of say, "Oh, I'm I'm keen to do, be more physically active. Um, I feel a little bit unsure because I have a disability." Um, what's kind of what are my options here? What what would you suggest? What is the next step? Yeah, so there, um, there is a lot of clubs around around Melbourne and around Victoria that are uh, really welcoming to people with disability. Um, I've always found that wherever I have been to a, a new club in, in Melbourne, um, they've always welcomed me with open arms. And um, yeah, table tennis, it is a sport for everyone. And I think a lot of the people that play are aware of this and are quite passionate about sharing a sport for everyone. So. If you really want to um, get involved and learn how to play the sport a bit more, um, yeah, uh, go down, find, find your local club, and yeah, you'll have the time of your life. You'll really enjoy it. It's such a fun social sport as well. Awesome, Trevor. Thank you so much. That's that's really good to know. And um, yeah, there will be contact details from Cara, of course, from Table Tennis Australia to help you guys to find the, the local opportunity to have a hit. Sure.